Here's where we are, okay? Uh, you're at 91% of the estimated vote out there. Donald Trump with a 34,000 raw vote lead over Nikki Haley today. Remember, we talked about the margin deep into the night last night. Right now, a tick above 11% between Trump and Haley. Let's go into the issues and find out what's breaking down uh, in this uh, the, the current race here on the delegate tracker, which is the whole game now in this primary, okay? The first one to 1,215 wins it, okay? As of today, Trump's at 32, coming off the 20 from Iowa, and Nikki Haley uh, is at 17. Here are the issues that we went out in the field to figure out. Among New Hampshire Republicans now, what do they say is the most important quality? Overwhelmingly this right here, 95% mentally fit. And you wonder how much of that reflection is about how Republicans feel about the mental fitness of Joe Biden. We can talk about that in a moment. Strong leader, kind of similar, right? 85%. Then you get into policies at 75. Can you win right around 74? And whether or not you care at 72. We'll see what that tells us in time. What are your priorities? National priority for Donald Trump, 73% who put immigration as number one voted with him. Conversely, 26% for Nikki Haley. One more I'll share with you here. Uh, this is what is the most important issue facing the country. Uh, in New Hampshire, by far and away, economy and jobs at number two and immigration at 41%. We found that just about everywhere we went in the state over the past couple of days. Want to move on back over here with a pot and a Dana. Why don't you go ahead and bring in the, the all star panel? Can we use that phrase? I am steal that for the moment. Yeah, you know yeah, what? I don't think Brett's here, so I'm <laughs> taking it. Indeed. <laughs> Kellyanne Conway, um, the border Morning. over time, especially over the Biden administration, has just increased. And we saw it was inflation for a long time. Inflation's still not great. But immigration has overtaken it in Iowa, New Hampshire, and nationally in the polls. Yes, it has. The arc of the issue over the last nine years since Donald Trump, the candidate, elevated it into the national consciousness has been remarkable, Dana. It has really been a trajectory upward. And when Bill referred to it as Biden's border crisis, that's the way most New Hampshire voters and most Americans see it. it the border is probably the most daily visible example of the failure of the Biden administration. Yes, gas and grocery prices, now a three-year-old example. But it's people watching what's happening in our major cities. They, the footage, our own Bill Malusian, standing at the border, showing us what's happening in Eagle Pass, Texas, and elsewhere. Uh, and this is an issue that, Ni that Nikki Haley probably hasn't done a good enough job to date of saying, here's my three-point plan, or here's my four-point blueprint. I'm going to succeed where Donald Trump failed on the border. She can't now. I worked in Donald Trump's White House, full disclosure. We all know that. But I will say on the border, this is something we worked on daily. And when the Democrats took over control of the House in 2018, beginning in January, February 2019, we had meetings in the Situation Room. I was there with Nancy Pelosi, the new speaker, with Chuck Schumer, the majority leader in the Senate. She held up, she shut down the government over border funding. She also broke a record for an eight-hour filibuster on DACA. So even there, when they tried to tackle, quote, immigration or issues at the border, it was askew when you compare it to what people are really talking about. Immigration is an economic issue. It's a national security, national sovereignty. The overflow of drugs here in New Hampshire, Governor Sununu has done a nice job, but for a long time, um, it was number two in the nation, first in the nation for the primary, number two in overdose deaths. Mm -hmm. Last year, Border Patrol said about 112. The CDC says about 112 overdose deaths. You can fill up Fenway Park uh, probably two and a half times. This is ridiculous. Uh, Josh, mm -hmm. take a step forward now, because you've got Nevada, which will, in all likelihood, goes off for Trump because it's a caucus and it counts primary does not and then what is today's is january 24th on february 24th the south carolina primary uh it's a winner take all state 50 delegates on the line can, can you just like lay out the path for what comes next for Haley and Trump? Well, look, Nikki Haley was depending on a strong performance in New Hampshire so she could springboard into her home state of South Carolina, and that would be the, the one-two punch. The problem for Haley, though, is that she just didn't do well enough with Republicans. The voters who were talking about immigration as their top issue, she lost those voters by almost 50 points to Donald Trump. So she's become the candidate of the moderates, the anti-Trump coalition, maybe the Trump skeptical voters. But that's not enough to win in states like South Carolina, where which are closed primaries, where, where it's much more conservative. Uh, so it's going to be a big challenge ahead. There's four weeks until South Carolina. I can imagine Trump uh, and the campaign is going to be out with the attacks, like we heard last night. So it's going to be a real challenge for her to expand her, her appeal. She could have had a chance to win New Hampshire if she got more Republican voters, but her appeal came mostly from the independent voters, which is not enough to win across the map.
President Biden's not waiting around for Nikki Haley's um, trip to South Carolina, trip home to South Carolina. This is what he said last night, Juan. It is now clear that Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee, and my message to the country is the stakes could not be higher. Our democracy, our personal freedoms, from the right to choose to the right to vote, our economy, which has seen the strongest recovery in the world since COVID, all are at stake. And also yesterday, they made a big change and took somebody that has been in the White House, Jennifer O'Malley, uh, Dylan or Dylan O'Malley, excuse me, and, and taking her out of the White House and back to the campaign, which is exactly what Barack Obama said he needed to do. Also, Mike Donilon, yes. Yeah, so what you're seeing O'Donnell. is that they are really shoring up what's going on in Wilmington in the campaign. And I think they're starting to run a general election campaign. That's why they've been out on the abortion issue, which is much bigger nationally than even immigration. And when you think about immigration here, you think about it at, I think it was 40 percent of the voters said it was their number one issue. And as you saw, those people overwhelmingly voted for president, former President Trump. But you think about where Nikki Haley goes on that issue. There's been lots of criticism among Republicans that DeSantis and Haley really have held back on criticizing the former president. You could say, oh, the wall didn't get built. Mexico didn't pay for it. There was an effort in 2017 at a comprehensive immigration deal. What happened to it? So he says it's a big issue, continues to build it up. And I think there's a lot of concern, too, that Democrats don't see it in the way that Republicans see it. If it's 40 percent here in New Hampshire among Republicans as the number one issue, it's less than half of that among the Democrats. So you're talking in a general election about reaching out to those voters who went for Nikki Haley last night. Yeah. And how does Trump do that if he's emphasizing an issue that has tremendous power with the MAGA base? But not really. Okay, That's fair a good question point. then, I'm, Kellyanne. I'm, I mean, you ran a campaign. Go ahead, Dana. I just wanted to ask you: Is that is it true that that abortion is a more is a, is a higher issue of concern nationally than immigration? I haven't seen that in the polls. It certainly is every time Kamala Harris is reading from a teleprompter like yesterday, or Joe Biden is in Manassas, Virginia, to make it a big deal. Look, abortion is important, and if the if the Republicans lose to a party whose party platform essentially says abortion anyone, anytime, anywhere, anyhow, with no reasonable restrictions or other, they become science deniers. They knew enough about science to mask up our five-year-olds, but they look at a sonogram of a five-month-old and pretend they don't know what they see. It's waving back at you, that's a male organ. I mean, we have to get real about this. So they're very extreme on abortion. Four states in our country, Colorado, Illinois, New York, California, are all at 39 weeks. Babies are being born at 24 weeks in those states, Dana and Bill. Mm-hmm. So Republicans need to sharpen up on this messaging. I think the state initiatives have been a disaster, 0 for 7. I was against doing that. It was too soon. Um, but you can't lose to a party that is pretending all these other issues are not clear and present. I haven't seen the polling. Maybe Juan seen. I think he makes a point about non-Republican voters nationwide. But I think there's growing headaches for Joe Biden on immigration from people like Senator John Fetterman of Pennsylvania calling the border a crisis, yep. from Katie Hobbs, the female Democratic governor of Arizona, saying, do something. That's going to, I think, snowball. And let's be fair. You gave Donald Trump the advice last night sitting right here, go to the border. That's smart. Joe Biden needs to get there. Alejandro Mayorkas needs to call this a crisis the way most Americans do. Uh, Kamala Harris went one time and she went to McAllen, Texas, I think, and they call her the border czar. They gave her this odd Russian title uh, to, to try to fix our number one issue. Every state is a border state now. People know what they say, and I'll make another prediction. What's happening in our cities, which includes this, but not exclusively, it is not going to change the votes in our cities. They'll vote Democratic. It's going to have a resounding effect on people outside of the cities. They're seeing that. They're saying, I don't want my kids to apply to college yeah. in the city. I don't want to go there for dinner, for work, for entertainment. That's going to have a major impact. And I think just talking about abortion, talking to every woman from the waist down instead of the waist up, where our eyes, ears, hearts, mouths, and brains are, is a fool's errand. Well, Joe Biden's got 10 months to try and figure out and improve on some of the issues that uh, are apparent to many. Kellyanne, thank you. It's Josh, Juan, so thanks for great panel. hanging out. Our, yeah, own, right our own all-star it's, panel. It's a beautiful life in Bedford. <laughs> it sure yeah. is. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.